memory and the Sonic the Hedgehog movie's release date draws closer and closer as well as talk of a new 2021 Sonic game in development. I think it's time we take a look back to just how this past decade has really been for Sonic. So much for the franchise has changed over the past 10 years, for better and for worse. The Sonic brand has changed so much and whether it's for better or worse is definitely not a black and white answer. Some people would argue Sonic dodged death and evolved to keep up with trends in terms of both gameplay and character while others would argue Sonic has become a mere nostalgia pandering childish and simple brand that has no longer the complexity it once held so high. Regardless of your opinion, 
I will be going through every main Sonic game and spin-off released between 2010 to 2019. Enjoy. <sighs> ah yes, Sonic the Hedgehog 4. Probably best to get this bad boy out of the way now. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to talk about both Sonic 4 Episode 1 and 2 in one go. Sonic 4 Episode 1 released on the 7th of October 2010 and Episode 2 released on the 15th of May 2012. Both games were digital only and could be purchased through Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, Steam and mobile devices. Now these games at this point are universally seen as a disappointment and I completely agree. Back when Sonic 4 was initially announced, the Sonic franchise was much different. Classic Sonic was never seen or talked about and the only real 2D Sonic games we got were handheld ones for the Game Boy Advance and DS. So in the build up to this game's release it's safe to say there was hype, especially when the name is Sonic 4. However, upon release the game was a huge letdown. Firstly, all zones were essentially just reskins of older zones with different names. The level design was significantly more basic with springs and boost pads literally fucking everywhere and of course I can't forget the physics. They were so far off and wonky from how Classic Sonic felt that there was barely any resemblance at all. There was no sense of momentum and Sonic 4 just wasn't fun. The games relied too heavily on the novelty that they were a 2D Sonic game and never tried to be anything more. Sonic 4 Episode 2 did slightly improve the physics graphics and add new gameplay mechanics but the game still suffered mostly from a lot of the issues Episode 1 had. I would say Episode 2 is slightly better but not by much. Don't get me wrong, neither of these games are awful, they never bombed, they're just painfully mediocre. The thing that kills these games the most is the name. Calling it Sonic 4 created a huge amount of hype that they just couldn't possibly live up to. Sonic 4 both Episode 1 and 2 received generally mixed to negative reviews from fans and critics. Fucking colours. After Sonic Team introduced the boost gameplay in Unleashed, they heard the fan feedback and gave us what we asked for. A full on Sonic boost game with no gimmicks. That doesn't count. After Sonic 06, Shadow the Hedgehog, Sonic 4 and the polarising opinions on Sonic Unleashed, the Sonic franchise as a whole seemed like a sinking ship on a one way path to destruction. But then, Sonic Colours happened. The game was a huge breath of fresh air. It was just fun. No gimmicks, no weird controls, no bullshit. The game was a straightforward, good time, and it is exactly what everyone needed. However, this isn't to say the game didn't come with some problems. Many Sonic fans have looked back on Colors and pointed out that it started some pretty bad trends in the franchise. Firstly, the voice actor for Sonic was changed to Roger Craig Smith, who I think most Sonic fans are not a fan of at this point. Not to say many were when the game released. However, the main issue for Colors was it marked a huge change for Sonic game stories and how Sonic as a character is presented. The writers would change the guys who had openly said in interviews they had never played a Sonic game and weren't Sonic fans. And boy does it fucking show. Sonic now acts like a kid's cartoon character, constantly making crappy one-liners and speaking to the audience. Sonic now just kind of acts like a guy trying really, really hard to be cool. Along with this, the plot for Sonic Colors is one of the most simple plots a 3D Sonic game has ever had. When the game released, people didn't seem too bothered by this, as they were so relieved to get a fun Sonic game, they just looked past it. They also thought, ah oh well, it's just one game. But as people begin to see that all Sonic games plots from then on didn't seem to get much better, Colors now is seen as the game that started the shitty childish storylines. Oh yeah, quickly before I forget, Sonic Colors also released on the Nintendo DS, running off the Sonic Rush engine. And just like its console counterpart, it was a joy to play. The Wisps were implemented well and the game did a good job of cramming all the themes of the console games onto one tiny little cartridge. It also has more replayability than the Wii version as you can collect all 7 Chaos Emeralds and fight a true final boss as Super Sonic, which is completely absent from the console game. Both Sonic Colors on Wii and DS received very positive reception from critics and fans.
On Sonic's 20th birthday, we were gifted Sonic Generations, and just like Colors, the game was great. It seems Sonic Team had finally begun to stick with the gameplay style for Sonic and just keep improving. Sonic Generations brought us the best boost gameplay for Sonic to this day in my opinion, and introduced for the first time in a very, very long time, Classic Sonic fully playable in a Sonic game. While Classic Sonic doesn't control exactly how you remember, it's a lot fucking closer than Sonic 4, and the stages are significantly designed better. In the game, you blitz through zones from Sonic's past remixed and remade for both modern Sonic and classic Sonic with incredible new HD graphics. While the game does feature no new zones at all, no one seemed bothered by this as they could speed through iconic levels like City Escape, Speed Highway, Green Hill Zone and Crisis City in two gameplay styles that were extremely refined and polished. I personally believe Generations is the game where Sonic has controlled the best in 3D out of every game ever made. Sonic Team was sticking with the boost formula and it was paying off hugely. Also, after the monstrosity that was Sonic 4, fans were so happy to see classic Sonic stages that were designed so much better and didn't look so damn budget. Sonic Generations also released on the 3DS and was developed by a different studio. The game's alright. Both classic Sonic and modern Sonic controlled in 2D and some of the zones are changed but they both control well enough and the levels for the most part are quite fun. The game feels significantly more budget than its console counterpart but that's to be expected. The only major issue with Sonic Generations is its story. Once again, the writers from Sonic Colors are back and we get that same simple, childish, no depth story. There's no real tension or sense of threat in the story compared to something like Unleashed or Adventure. However, we can slightly forgive this since the game is an anniversary title and it is so fun. But it really must be noted that at this point, people were starting to pick up on how Sonic plot were really beginning to suck dick. Oh yeah. Also, Sega actually decided to release Sonic Generations on PC, and the game looks absolutely amazing to this day. Along with that, it has garnered a huge modern community with so many levels and characters being added in. I currently stand at over 300 hours game time for Sonic Generations on Steam purely through mods, and some of the things people make are truly incredible. Sonic Generations received very positive reviews from critics and fans and was a huge commercial success for Sega. Time for Sonic Lost Worlds. The first next gen Sonic game. Sonic Lost Worlds is a result of a partnership between Nintendo and Sega for three Sonic the Hedgehog games to be released on the Wii U, and this is the first. Trust me, we will get to the other two. On new, more powerful hardware and with an amazing gameplay style, three games are built upon at this point. It seems like on paper this game would be amazing. Another boost game with a new story, unique levels, and new sexy graphics. It's a recipe for success, but Sega doesn't like making money, and they made a decision with this game I will never ever be able to understand. They ditched the boost for this game and tried out an all new gameplay style. Sonic now has the spin dash, bounce bracelet, a changed homing attack, a fucking parkour system, and a run button. Yes, a run button. And the boost is, of course, absent. Now the actual control of Sonic is not awful. He is incredibly snappy and responsive, but it's just nowhere near as fun as the boost gameplay. Sonic's home and attack now auto locks onto multiple enemies which can really be frustrating and just makes the home and attack so much less satisfying to pull off. Along with this new gameplay style came a new design of levels. Levels now took on this weird floating planets approach and gravity allowed Sonic to completely move around all sides of it, just like Mario Galaxy. Speaking of Mario, when the game released, one of the major complaints was the lack of originality. To say Sonic Lost World had new levels is quite a debatable statement. The themes of each world are literally copy and paste from the new Super Mario Bros. zones and just feel really bland and uninspired. The story for the game, in my opinion, was a step in the right direction with some character developments from Sonic, Tails and Eggman, but the game's setting is so boring the story is completely held back. The Deadly Six seemed bland and uninspired with little motive and character and the whole game overall was just meh. A huge disappointment for many fans who were expecting another boost game with new original zones. And let's face it, the Wii U needed a good Sonic game. Sonic Lost Worlds was also released on the 3DS, which strangely enough is the version I've spent the most time with, and I actually prefer. I think Sonic controls better, but the game seems to start off strong with the first world and then just nosedives at World 3 to pathetically long levels with frustrating designs that just weren't fun to play. 
The only real thing I can give Sonic Lost World is the Wii U game does look very nice. Sonic Lost World received mixed reception from critics upon its release and generally negative reception amongst the fans. Okay, the elephants in the room, Sonic Boom. Just like I did with Sonic 4, I'm going to be grouping both Sonic Boom Rise of Living for Wii U and Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal into one section. Firstly, some context. Sonic Boom was not just another Sonic game, it was a whole reboot for the franchise. Sega wanted an all new Sonic that could appeal to more western audiences and Sonic Boom is the result of that. Now it's hard to talk about this so briefly since the development of Sonic Boom and more specifically the Wii U game is just so interesting but I do plan to do a whole video on that game in the future so for now I'll keep it short. Essentially, Sega contacted Big Red Button, an up and coming video game development studio full of many veterans of the game industry with a proposal, make a completely new Sonic game unlike any one made before and the studio was essentially given free reigns to do what they want. However, as development progressed, Sonic Team and Sega become more and more restrictive on the game and severely limited Big Red Button's vision. Then, on top of that, it was suddenly announced that Sonic Boom would be a Wii U exclusive game due to the previously mentioned three Sonic games on Wii U deal, despite the team already making the game with systems like PS4 and Xbox One in mind, which are significantly more powerful than the Wii U. This was bad enough on its own, but the game was being developed on the CryEngine, which had such trouble working correctly with the Wii U that Nintendo themselves directly had to step in at one point to aid development. Sega continued to just add pressure onto the pile, announcing that the game would now have to fit in the universe of Sonic Boom, a new TV show Sega had agreed to air for kids, and lastly, the game would release alongside a 3DS game set in the same universe made by a completely different studio. After all of this, that initial promise of Big Red Button using the Sonic IP and creating something truly unique to showcase to the world didn't really sound like the truth. I could go into detail about this story as it's so interesting and actually quite sad as it completely ruined Big Red Button's reputation before the company had essentially even got off the ground. But as I said, I do plan to make a video on the subject eventually and there are other videos of similar nature out there if you really are interested. As for the game? Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric for Wii U was abysmal, and not just like Sonic 4 or Sonic Lost Worlds where the game was an average experience, no, Sonic Boom was bad, like Sonic 06 bad. In fact the game actually has a lower rating than 06 on Metacritic. Sonic Boom's story is convoluted and gives you no context to the new world you're in. The gameplay has no idea what it wants to be and takes on so many different styles that it ends up just doing each one extremely poorly. And as previously mentioned, due to the game being on CryEngine on the Wii U platform, it runs like absolute piss. It's a buggy mess. Like game breaking buggy. At launch there were glitches that could literally allow you to skip entire sections of the game. Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal on 3DS was nowhere near as bad but was still not great and definitely nowhere near enough to distract people from Rise of Lyric. The story was simplistic however this can be forgiven due to the game being on a handheld and the way the characters controlled was actually pretty good however the level design and most importantly the choice to lock levels behind hidden collectives in each level just dragged the game down. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric received overwhelmingly negative reviews from both fans and critics, and Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal received generally negative reviews from fans and critics. And now, as of this recording, the last Sonic Boom game to ever be released. And let's face it, another Sonic Boom game is not happening. When this game was announced, everyone was completely shocked that Sega would even consider creating another Sonic Boom game. But they did, and Sonic Boom Fire and Ice was released on the 27th of September 2016. Now the only reason this game even exists in my opinion is because of how popular the Sonic Boom TV show really became. Unlike the games that released alongside it, the Sonic Boom TV show was surprisingly actually really good and it actually got renewed for a second season. This TV show was essentially keeping the Sonic Boom brand relevant to some degree and Sega capitalised on it and rehired Sanzaru Games who created Sonic Boom Shadow Crystal to give it another go. 
Well, they actually did a pretty competent job. Remember how when I was talking about Shattered Crystal before, I mentioned that the characters actually played pretty good but were held back by levels being stuck behind collectibles and the level design as a whole? Well, they fixed the level design and removed the need for collectibles. And guess what? The game is fun. It's nothing amazing but for what it needs to be, it's a competent game that is good to play in quick bursts when you have time to kill. The fire and ice gimmick isn't really fleshed out but it still adds another layer onto the gameplay. The story is pretty bland and doesn't really explain why you have fire and ice abilities at all to be honest, but it's lighthearted and has in-game full cutscenes which Shattered Crystal didn't have, so for a portable spin-off game I'll allow it. Sonic Boom Fire and Ice received generally positive reviews from critics and fans. <laughs> Seriously, what can I say about Sonic Mania that hasn't already been said to death? This game is phenomenal, and one of the best Sonic games in years. Sega hired a team that was known for their mods of the classic Sonic games, and they made something beautiful. With the incredible Christian Whitehead on board, who is known for the amazing Sonic 1, 2 and CD mobile ports, you knew this game was going to be good, and it lived up to the hype. The game essentially resurrected Sonic's name from the dirt after Sonic Boom. Sonic Mania released on the 15th of August 2017 and featured a mix of brand new levels and remixed old ones. The only possible complaint I could have is if we got to see more new zones because they were just so amazing. The game's art style is gorgeous and the whole experience is packed full of references for Sega fans to see. You can really tell that this game was crafted with love. Sonic Mania received overwhelmingly positive reviews from critics and fans alike. And now, we are finally on to the last mainstream Sonic game released, <sighs> Sonic Forces. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, this was an interesting game <laughs> to say the least. Hot off the tail of Sonic Mania, hype for this game was pretty big. From the offset, the marketing for this game shoved in our faces that the game was from the team that brought you Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations, installing us with hope. We then see that the game is going back to the boost formula, this is it. A true boost game and full next generation hardware, not just the Wii U. This game must be amazing. We see that the story appears to actually be going for a darker tone with the plot being Eggman has defeated Sonic and nearly conquered the whole world with Sonic and his friends now just a small resistance group. The possibilities for this game were endless. It was running on the Hedgehog Engine 2, a brand new engine created specifically for this game that was a follow up from Hedgehog Engine 1, which was used in Sonic Unleashed Colors and Generations, which were all great games. This game can't possibly fail. But then we see that Classic Sonic is returning, which put a few people off as he really had no reason to be here. This isn't like Sonic Generations, this is a normal modern Sonic game. And then to add on top of that, we see that we also have a brand new custom avatar character. Now just like I did with Sonic Boom, I'm going to try and keep this brief since this is yet another topic I want to make a video on in the future, but Sonic Forces was a huge disappointment. The story was abysmal, with no real depth and no character development. Despite the amazing premise, Sonic Team did nothing with it. There was never a sense of threat. Classic Sonic felt really weird to control and it, it's hard to explain without you actually feeling for yourself, but it was definitely a step down for Sonic Generations. He just has no real momentum. Just like his controls, his levels were also a step down from Sonic Generations, with springs and booster pads everywhere, along with copy and paste level themes. Modern Sonic didn't fare much better. He could no longer drift, he can no longer use the light speed dash, and just so much of what was built on in Sonic Generations was taken away. They completely simplified Sonic's controls and stripped him of his abilities. He was just not fun to play. He isn't the only issue, his levels are arguably worse. Sonic's levels are the most shallow and simplistic levels I have ever played in a Sonic game, full stop. The levels literally are a straightforward path and extremely short. 
even Sonic Boom Rise of lyrics levels weren't this shallow. Most levels average in at around 1 minute 10 seconds of playtime before ending. And when you know the stage, it's an easy feat to finish the level in under a minute. And lastly, there is the custom avatar, who is just boring to play. With the custom avatar, they had an opportunity to make a combat focused gameplay style, but instead, it's basically modern Sonic without the boost and with a completely overpowered weapon that you literally just wipe through robots with. No challenge, no skill, and most importantly, not fun. For me, Sonic Forces is the game that hurts the most out of every one we have talked about, because I was just so hyped for the game, and the premise was such a cool idea. I truly cannot comprehend how they could mess this game up so bad. They literally had things so good with Generations. Why choose to strip down modern Sonic and add in these unnecessary gameplay styles? Look at the level design of other boost games like Unleashed. They were miles better. Now despite me just completely shitting on the game, don't be fooled. This game isn't bad like Sonic Boom or Sonic 06. It's more along the lines of Sonic Lost Worlds. Everything it does isn't bad, it's just painfully mediocre. What makes the game so bad, in my eyes, is the fact that games before it had just done things so much better. If I can give the game anything, it's that the music can be pretty good in some cases, and the graphics do look nice. But then again, they changed the art style from how Sonic Unleashed Colors and Generations looked, and everything just looks a bit simplistic in my opinion. It's hard to describe. Sonic Forces received generally mixed reviews from critics and generally negative reviews from fans. Okay, wow, that took a while. This video is getting longer and longer, so to finish off, let's go through all the Sonic spin-offs that came out. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, fun card game that was way better than anyone expected, full of Sega characters and references for fans, received well by both critics and fans. Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games, the game's pretty good, never really understood the appeal of these games but people seem to say this is the best one. The game did really well and fans and critics said it was alright. Sonic and All Stars Racing Transform, built upon the first game in every way, a joy to play, definitely the best Sonic Racing game, critics and fans loved it. Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games, the games are alright. It's also the other game in Sega's three Sonic games for Wii U deal with Nintendo, has a very long title. Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. You get the gist by now, games are right, long title. Team Sonic Racing, ditch the other Sega characters in favour for just Sonic and remove the transform vehicles, instead bringing with it a new team mechanic. Game's pretty good, but the general consensus appears to be transform racing was better. Critics seem to generally like it, as did the fans. And lastly, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. Game was seen to step up from Ryu and Sochi and also took advantage of the Switch quite well. Game was generally well received by fans and critics. And with that, we're done. I think personally, this decade has been a mixed bag for Sonic, but overall, games like Colors, Generations, the racing games, and most importantly, Sonic Mania outshine the not so stellar games, but not by much. Here's to hoping 2020 to 2030 can be a much more consistent decade for Sonic.